Now, Faraday's laws. So I've jumped back here and said Redox Basics. The reason I've jumped back here and said Redox Basics is because Faraday's laws, interestingly, come up as part of area study one now. So they come up as part of our fuel and our galvanic cells. However, I personally feel like it's more useful in electrolysis and they do also come up again in electrolysis. Now, there is more detail in the first area study because they want you to be taught the exacts of the Faraday's laws. The area study two Faraday's laws dot points are more about the application of it. So I actually personally feel like they're still emphasizing area study two and the use of Faraday's laws in electrolysis, which is what I'm actually going to teach more of today. However, the idea is that you should know how to look at Faraday's laws when it comes to cells and redox basics, which is part of area study one. So if, you're a, if your sacs are split up into area study one, area study two, and you have redox split up from electrolysis, then you do need to know Faraday's laws for that first sac. If they're not split up, doesn't matter. You're going to learn it no matter what, so don't stress too much. But there are two major Faraday's laws, and you do need to know both of Faraday's laws. So Faraday's laws are essentially, the first one is that the mass of the metal uh, produced at the cathode is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity you pass through the cell. So if you pass more electricity through, you get more metal produced. If you get less electricity passed through, you get less metal produced. And for one mole of substance to be deposited at the cathode, a whole number of moles of electrons is required. And this is where our 96,500 sort of constant comes from. Also, as you can see there, Faraday's also has a constant equal to 96,500 coulombs per mole. I will utilize our formula to link all these concepts together. Now, there are two major Faraday's laws. The first implies the mass of the metal is sort of uh, determined by the electrical sort of activity. But when he wrote this out, he said like the mass of the metal is proportional to Q. And what does Q mean? Well, Q is the charge in coulombs. So Q is coulombs. I and T are amps and seconds in time. So we do know a very similar equation to this, which we talked about earlier. Uh, no, a very similar equation which we talked about in the last area study, which was calorimetry. So we would have discussed this in calorimetry. We would have discussed E equals VIT. Um, that was in area study one with like our foods and our fuels as foods. Here, we look at Q equals IT. So slightly different, but very, very similar. Um, but again, how does this relate to mass? So you've got Q equals IT. How do I relate this back to mass? What am I going to talk about with mass and metal? Not really sure what's going on. Well, we can determine the moles of electrons from charge. And so the moles of electron is equal to the charge over Faraday's constant. And if we know the moles of electrons, we can then utilize that to determine the moles of a product, like our solid nickel here. We can then determine using stoichiometry stoichiometric ratios and stoichiometry what is our you know what is our mass of our nickel so these two equations need to be used in sort of a flow chart path so you need to know q equals i times t and n or moles of electrons is equal to q over f and f is your faraday's constant you'll find this in your data booklet but you're also welcome to just remember it it's something you should just remember 96,500 charges in coulombs uh, and that's probably about it from there. This is essentially what your pathway looks like. So you can either go this way or you can go this way and it's really important that you understand you can go both ways in these questions. You can start with a mass of fuel and determine the amount of charge that or it doesn't even need to be mass of fuel. It should be really mass of metal to be honest. I think I sort of got this from... so realistically what we talk about here is that we can talk about this in terms of our air study one with fuels but realistically i want to talk about electrolysis so we'll talk about metal you can get your mass of metal and determine how much charge was given or you can determine the amount of charge that was given and the mass of metal that was deposited so you can kind of go one way or the other with this and it's important to understand that it can go both ways this is not just a one-way pathway you need to know both ways you need to know left to right and you need to know right to left you cannot just think it's always going to go one way. So as he says, this pathway can go forward and backwards. So super important you practice this both ways. 
Now, what is an actual practical example of this? And the reason why I think it's more relevant to understand uh, Faraday's in context with electrolysis is because the application for it is much broader, is, is far more broader. Um, I think there is far more examples or many more examples. I don't even know how you want, want me to Englishly say that. Terrible English of mine. There's just a, a larger breadth that you can get to with electrolysis. And one of those examples is electroplating. Now, I hope some of you have seen electroplating before. This was essentially, it is discussed in year 11, uh, unit one, two. So uh, very, very briefly, it's not discussed in detail though, because you don't go through the electrolysis in year 11. Uh, but electrolysis is essentially the idea that, uh, or electroplating, sorry, is the idea that if you take an object such as a, a spoon and you want to put a thin layer of silver over the top of it to make it look like a fancy spoon, you can put it in a solution, apply a battery, and then you can sort of suck what you want out of that solution onto that spoon. Now, this is essentially what it looks like. So if I want to take this electrode here, so I've got two electrodes. I've got a gold electrode here and I've got a copper electrode here. Now, Let's say this copper electrode is something. Let's say this copper electrode is a piece of jewelry. I don't know why you have copper jewelry, but let's just say it is. You've got a piece of jewelry here, and you've got a big wad of gold here. And I essentially want to cover this copper jewelry in a thin layer of gold so it looks really fancy. That's what I want to do. The best way to do this is via electroplate, where you put your gold here at your positive anode. So this is your positive anode. This is your negative cathodes. These electrodes, once we start, this will be positive anode, negative electro, uh, negative cathode. And what we do is this. So when we start the battery, all this stuff going on, you get your gold breaking down. So this gold breaks down into gold ions and electrons. Over at your cathode, you suck these gold ions out of the solution and onto the surface of the electrode, which in this case here is a metal, it is the copper jewelry, and you suck it onto there and you sort of attach it as a thin layer and you form gold solid. So as you can see, the electron comes off, gold comes out, gold becomes a gold ion. That becomes smaller, as you can see there. The electron goes down, the gold attaches on with the electron and becomes gold solid. And then that starts to become bigger. And essentially all it's doing is getting a big gold layer on the outside. That is electroplating. That is electroplating at its finest. And that is essentially how it works. And the most common example of this is like silver plating of like spoons and tin plating of um, cans. Uh, you also get like copper plating of things. Electroplating is a really useful tool. Now there is also electro refining. I'm not going to discuss electro refining today. I, I think it's probably the next step on. Um, and we don't really have enough time to discuss it. But the other really good example of Faraday's laws and electrolysis is electroplating um, and something that you should really look at uh, discussing. Now, in this situation here, going back to electroplating, if I wanted to make it a really thick layer, I'm going to need to apply more electricity for a longer amount of time as per my equation back here. This equation, I'd need to apply over a longer period of time and I'd end up applying more charge overall, or I could increase the current, either either. So if you increase both the current and the time, I'm gonna increase my, my Q even more. And then when I increase my Q, I increase my moles of electrons because my Q gets larger, gets divided by the same amount, but it's going to be end up as a larger value. I end up with more moles of electrons, more moles of electrons when I use stoichiometry is more moles of my metal and therefore more mass of my metal. So naturally, that's what's happening there. Let's jump through. All right, so what are the factors affecting the metal that is deposited? I don't want it to be over here, but it's obviously too big. So what are the factors affecting the metal that is deposited? Well, first of all, there's the charge of iron involved in the reaction. So if you look at here, nickel, to make a nickel solid atom from nickel, ions, I need two electrons, whereas silver, I only need one electron. So nickel is going to require twice as many electrons as silver. So it's going to take longer to 
essentially get the same amount of metal deposited in moles. The current flowing through the cell we discussed already. If we flow the, if we increase the current, we're going to get more electrons because current is essentially a measure of the rate of electrons. So if we increase the current, we get more electrons. More electrons means more metal being deposited, and a higher current means you know essentially more electrons are delivered. And then our last factor is the length of time. So if the time is increased, the longer the current flows, the more electrons are delivered, the more metal is deposited. So all these sort of simple facts can assist you in determining what is going on. Um, now I do apologize, my Mac is going a little bit flat, so hopefully that will charge here. So here's a really good example of Faraday's in, in an exam or in a question based setting. So a company needs to produce 25 grams of silver to create enough jewelry to sell its clients. To do, to do this, they set up an electrolytic cell with the following half reaction occurring at the cathode. They run this cell using a current of five amps for two hours. Would the company have produced enough silver? So you're welcome to have a go at this question if you would like. Um, I'm gonna go through it. If you have no idea what's going on, please feel free to just stick with me and we'll go through it. If you want to challenge yourself, please do pause right now and have a go at this question. Use the equations we've just been through. So Q equals IT, our N of, or our moles of electrons equals Q over F, which is 96,500. Um, and have a go at this question here and see if you can determine what is going on. So have a pause now, three, two, one, pause. And hopefully you're back. All those who stuck with me are still here. Let's go through this. So first step, we can determine our coulombs or our charge because we've got amps and we've got time. So two hours of time is essentially two by 60 by 60. So I do five by two by 60 by 60 and I get 36,000 coulombs. I then determine my moles of electrons by going 36,000 divided by 96,500, which gives me 0 0.373 moles. Now it's a one-to-one -one ratio from this to this one-to-one -one ratio from here to here. Therefore, my moles of silver deposited is also 0 0.373. And then I say, all right, well, what is my mass? Well, it's going to be 0 0.7, 0 0.373 times by 107.9. And I get this answer here. So I get 40.25 grams. And I would say, yes, they would have been enough. So 40.25 grams is more than 25 grams. Therefore, it, they would have enough silver. So essentially, I've got my answer and I've answered the question. If I didn't write yes, they would have enough or probably saying you, they would have enough silver is probably the way you want to write it. You want to complete completeness sake. You want to put silver at the end there. But if I hadn't put that down on the page, I'm not getting the answer there. I haven't done that right. It's really important. 